Welcome to module two of our course on financial accounting. This module is the most important module of an accounting course. If you want to survive your introduction to financial accounting course, you need to understand journal entries. The reason is, you know, in a couple of chapters, we're going to learn about receivables. Well, what do we do with receivables? We do journal entries. When we learn about inventory, we do journal entries of inventory. When we learn about long-term assets, journal entries. Journal entries will just come back again and again and again in any financial accounting course. So you really need to understand them. The good news is they're not too hard. There's a lot of harder topics, but the bad news is if you haven't understood it well, it's just going to haunt you for the rest of the class. So I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're watching this video. This video assumes no prior knowledge of journal entries. Maybe you've been to a class or tried to do some readings and you're feeling very shaky. You are in the right place. So let's begin. Let's start talking journal entries. And when I think about journal entries, funny enough, I don't think about accounting at all. I think about physics. Now, I didn't study a lot of physics in my life. I think I took a grade 11 physics class. That's it. Um, but I know enough to know that like, if you took a grade 11 physics class in Canada, where I'm from, um, the star of the physics class, if you could name a star, is this guy, Isaac Newton. Uh, here's his Wikipedia page. Very important person in the world of physics, apparently discovered a lot of important uh, uh, rules about how the, the world works, I guess. And uh, so, you know, he's very famous for like sitting under an apple tree and an apple falls on his head and he apparently discovered gravity. I, I don't exactly know how that works, but obviously a lot of the math behind gravity he uh, is uh, thought of as one of the early um, people to understand that. Um, but if you've taken, a, an, a, again, first year physics class or an early physics class, you've learned about Newton's laws. So there's one like force equals mass times acceleration or an object in motion wants to stay in motion. An object at rest wants to stay at rest. But it's his, I think it's his third law that I want to talk about here. And Newton's third law, I think it's his third, says for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Every time one thing happens, something equal and opposite is happening. And that's what I want you to think about when we talk about journal entries. There's not just one thing happening, there's always kind of equal and opposite forces acting in a journal entry. And uh, this is core to the concept of journal entries. And let me give you an example. So let's say I go to the car dealership and I buy my dream car. It's a Volkswagen Golf think GTI? I don't know. I'm not a car guy, but I really like the Volkswagen Golf. It's my uh, favorite car. So I go and buy a Volkswagen Golf. So my Volkswagen Golf, I'm just going to say car here for short. My car, the amount of cars I have, actually let's call it cars, goes up by, let's say it cost me $30,000. So I now have $30,000 in car assets I didn't previously have, right? My cars have gone up by $30,000. Well, at the same time, something else has to happen. I either have to take a loan or let's just make this as clean and simple as possible. Let's say I showed up with $100 bills, you know, $300, $100 bills. So that's $30,000 in cash. And I hand the car dealer $30,000 in cash. They hand me the keys to my nice, shiny red Volkswagen Golf. Well, something simultaneous has happened then from an accounting perspective, right? And accounting is all about tracking financial events. Uh, and this is a financial event that has happened. What has happened simultaneous to my car going up? My cash has gone down. I've lost $30,000 cash. I no longer have that cash. That cash belongs to the car dealer. So my cash goes down by $30,000. Okay. Well, we have followed a transaction. This is business being transacted, and it happens hundreds and even thousands of times in a day for many businesses. No, not buying cars uh, every day, but uh, certainly, you know, uh, Walmart will have hundreds and hundreds of sales transactions, just one branch of Walmart, not let alone the whole corporate entity. So there's lots of little transactions every day, and it's, you know, an accountant's role 
is to keep track of it all, right? We want to keep track of all of this in a logical way that's not going to drive you crazy, right? Because the company wants to keep track of its assets, its liabilities, its shareholders' equity accounts. It also wants to keep track of revenues and expenses to manage the business, right? Just to understand what's happening with your own business, let alone to prepare financial reports for you know, investors and things like that, which bigger companies absolutely want to do. So uh, starting with this micro-level transaction, we bought a car for cash. Cars went up, cash went down. This, we've kind of recorded the transaction, but this isn't how accountants record transactions. Maybe you were telling somebody you were going to take an accounting course and they said, watch out for those debits and credits. Well, this is where debits and credits come in. And again, when I'm reviewing, let's say a student has failed my class and they come into my office and they say, you know, I want to know why I failed. And we're looking at their final exam nine times out of 10, it's journal entries. It's this topic that sinks them. So really, you need to have your A game here. So anyway, let's talk about how journal entries work. Uh, I'm going to make a little table, and I'm going to make this table all the time. Uh, and I hope it's going to be helpful to you. So I write the accounting equation here. A equals L plus SE. Then I write an up arrow, down arrow down arrow, up arrow, down arrow, up arrow. Then beneath, I write dr, cr, dr, cr, dr, cr. Um, okay, <laughs> so it's a little bit convoluted so far. as uh, looks like a hieroglyphic, but believe me, by the end of this video, and certainly by the end of this module, you'll know what this hieroglyphic means. Um, so A, asset, L, liability, SE, shareholders, equity. We're getting pretty good at identifying accounts by now, right? It was all module one. And if you didn't do module one, go back and watch those videos. I think they'll be useful to you. But anyway, we should be pretty comfortable with all that jargon. DRCR is new. DR, well, I mean, CR, it makes great sense. CR stands for credit, CR, credit. And DR makes lots of sense. DR stands for drebit. Wait a minute debit with no there's no r in the word debit why do we put dr for debit um I, i've done some research on this and it's uh, unclear actually it is conflicting reports the one i like the best is just that like look accounting has existed for thousands of years and this was latin or some foreign language where the word for debit was a dr what i don't want you to think is that debit and credit mean like debit card and credit card, or uh, you know you have a credit on your account. Maybe you've heard that phrase. Don't even worry about that. What I want every student to do, especially if you were in banking, this is especially true for you, forget what you know about the word debit and credit. Uh, it's not gonna help you here. Accounting has a very specific use for the term. And if you sort of bring some previous baggage in and go, oh, I actually kind of know what this means, forget it. Like, it's going to help you just to work from a clean slate here. So um, let's look at this transaction, my car for cash transaction. I purchased a car for cash. Um, what is a car in you know this uh, chart here? Is it an asset liability or share of those equity? A car is an asset. Okay. We have a car increasing by $30,000. Therefore, an asset is increasing by $30,000. Therefore, I should, I was trying to highlight, but it didn't work very well. I should debit that asset because it's going up, right? I should debit that asset. So let's debit our car. Now, how am I going to debit my car? Well, if I were, if this were my like piece of paper, right? If I were a student and I had like a spiral notebook and you know, here's some hole punches on the side. Well, this isn't to scale, but you're getting the idea. Here's like the margin. I'll do it in red. This is like the margin. Uh, Etc. Okay, <laughs> I don't need to do this. Um, uh, at the top of the page, I would write dr with an underline and then cr with an underline. Then below, I would write the date. So uh, today's date is July 17th. So I would write July 17th. 17th. Okay, what happened on July 17th? I, I bought a car and I, I've just said I want to debit that car. So on the left side, sort of close to the margin here, I'm going to write the word car. And under the DR, I'm going to write 30,000. 
that's saying I'm debiting my car by $30,000. I don't need a dollar sign. Uh, now, what's happening with cash? Well, what is cash? Cash is going down, but what is cash? Cash is also an asset. To make an asset go down, we credit it. So let's credit cash. So when I write the word cash, I want to encourage you to write the word cash kind of over, almost like we've uh, hit enter on a computer and hit the space bar five times. Like, write it over here-ish. Uh, so, okay, I've written it over there. Now the number 30,000 goes on the credit side. Finally, I have to describe what's happened. And to describe what's happened, I write purchased a car for cash. And I might write some more details. I might write like, you know, Volkswagen Golf, you know, these are the features or whatever. You know, you might write more details here, but that's the gist of it, right? You're just trying to describe what's happening. Um, okay, so we've done it. We've done our first journal entry. I'm looking for a few things. One, I'm looking for an account to be debited, an account to be credited. I'm looking for the value of the debits and credits to match. So $30,000 worth of debits, $30,000 worth of credits. I'm looking for a date and I'm looking for a description. I'm also looking for there not to be dollar signs. So at this point, I've got myself a very good journal entry and we are on our way to understanding journal entries. I want to do a second version of this transaction. So, um, hmm, yeah, I'm just going to, what am I going to do? I'm just going to redo things. Okay, so uh, transaction two, I buy the car. So my car goes up by 30K and rather than cash, I just get a loan. So I get a car loan to pay for it. Now, when I get that financing, and let's just say no money down, right? Let's make this really simple. It's purely a car loan, 100% financed with a car loan. Um, what's happening with my car loan? Is it going up or down? Well, yesterday I didn't have a car loan. Today I do. So my car loan is going up by 30K. Now I know what you're thinking. You're skeptical right now. You're saying, Tony, didn't you just say Isaac Newton and every action there's an equal and opposite reaction? We got two things going up. Well, this is absolutely a possible thing in accounting, but I'll explain what I mean by equal and opposite in a sec. Let me just copy down my little table. In fact, I can just move it down the page here. So what's happening? I got a car going up by 30,000. So this is an asset increasing by 30,000. I'm going to debit that asset. So I'm gonna put car, and again, debit, credit. Uh, car going up by 30,000, car debit 30,000. Car loan, what is a car loan to me? Well, a car loan is a debt, right? It's something I have to pay back. It's a liability. We said the car loan is going up. I've got to credit my car loan. So I credit car loan. Maybe I'll even write the word payable in there because I like to write the word payables after liabilities. And again, it's a liability going up, so we credit it. 30,000. So when I talked about Isaac Newton saying for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, what I meant was every transaction will have a debit and a credit, at least one debit, at least one credit, and the values of those will be equal, right? The debits will equal our credits at the end of the day. Um, we need to uh, date this thing. So again, July 17th, and we need to describe it. Purchased a car financed with a loan. Okay, so we've done our second journal entry. Time to move on to the third and final journal entry of this intro, and then we're just gonna do lots and lots of practice journal entries. So let's do the third journal entry, the third scenario. Scenario three, I buy a car, my car goes up 30,000. Uh, but I put 10,000 down and finance the rest with a car loan. So my cash goes down 10,000 and my car loan goes up 20,000. Okay, we should be able to do this. So again, let me bring this little thing down. I like to have this close at hand. Uh, maybe I can bring it down a little more. Okay, there we go. I've left the D in debit. 
There we are. Um, so what's happening here? Well, my car is going up 30,000. It's an asset going up. Let's debit car. Car, again, debit, credit. Now, if I were doing all of my journal entries at once, I wouldn't write DRCR every time. I would write it at the top of the page, and that kind of holds for the call. So any anyway, debit car, 30,000. Now, what happened to cash? Cash went down. Cash is an asset going down. It's an asset decreasing. So credit cash, 10,000. And car loan is a uh, liability increasing. And to increase the liability, we credit it. So we credit car loan payable or just car loan. 20,000. So again, we need to date this July 17th. And we also need to describe it purchased a car, put 10K down, financed the rest with a car loan. All right. So we've got our third entry. One final note regarding these entries, because we haven't done any equity transactions. Most companies, there's not a lot of equity transactions, but there are transactions that affect equity, and those transactions involve revenues, expenses, and dividends. So let's think about how revenues affect equity. Revenues, if you earn a revenue, means you're more profitable, you have higher retained earnings if you're earning more revenue. So it makes equity go up. Revenues help shareholders equity. So revenues, because they always make equity go up, they're always a credit. Expenses, because they always make equity go down, they're always a debit and dividends the same because they always make equity go down, they are always a debit. This little table is the key to the whole thing. This is the key to your week. This is the key to, well, however long you're working on this, but this is the key to your understanding of journal entries. Uh, this is the most important topic of the semester, period, bar none. I don't think it's the hardest, although I do think it's hard, but there'll be harder things yet to come. But if you struggle here, you're going to struggle with everything in the course. So it's worth taking your time, worth practicing. I've got, I think it's eight really long problems, giving you lots of chances to practice, practice, practice your uh, uh, journal entries. It's, like I said, the most important thing. Okay, that's all for this video. If you stayed tuned this long, I hope you've liked it. And if, you know, again, if you're watching this on YouTube, I totally appreciate it. If you can share it with your friends, if you can give me a thumbs up uh, and just comment. Let me know what I can do to improve. So anyway, I appreciate that you're here. I appreciate that you hung in there to the bitter end. That's all for this video. See you next time. Bye for now.